in this lecture, we'll talk about analysis of large graph. And in particular, we'll talk about link analysis in general and page rank, which is the famous algorithm used by Google. And this is actually the start of the new topic, which is the modeling of graph data. And examples of graph data include social networks, such as the Facebook social graph, where actually each node of the graph represents one specific user, and the edge between two nodes represents that there is a friendship or friend relations between these two users. And another example is the media networks, where, for example, we have a lot of political political blocks and as you can see in the in the graph they actually naturally forms two clusters and within each cluster the blocks actually they are densely connected to each other but outside the outside each cluster they're actually much much more sparsely connected and these two clusters actually forms two political political parties for example the democrats and and, and the Republicans. And another example is the information networks, such as the citation networks or the maps of science. And in particular, you can see these graphs as each node represents one particular paper and the link between two nodes represents a citation relation between two papers. Let's say that paper one cites paper B then there will be a connection between these two nodes. And of course, we can also have communication networks where each computer in the internet is actually a node. And interestingly, the web itself can be treated as a graph and it's actually a direct graph where the nodes are the web pages and the edges are the hyperlinks. Let's say that, for example, in my homepage, I can write something like I teach a class on data mining and machine learning. And my homepage may link to a course website, which mentions the computer science building. And naturally, this web page will also be linked to the computer science department homepage. And the computer science department homepage will also be linked to the Rutgers University homepage. So as you can see here, the web is actually a direct graph where the nodes will be connected to each other using hyperlinks. And one broad question we want to ask is how to organize the web. And the first try is to use human curated web directories. For example, decades ago, Yahoo once try to uh, organize all the web pages in the world using a hierarchy of directories. Basically, they will come up with a hierarchy of directories and they will put in the web page in one or more of the directories. For example, if there's some uh, web pages related to art, then it will most probably be, uh, be included in the directory art scheme. But Apparently nowadays we have so many web pages and these human curated methods is no longer scalable. Therefore the second try would be to use web search. But one problem with traditional information retrieval is that it only investigates the problem of how to find relevant documents in a relatively small and trusted set. For example, um, if we want to retrieve or find some relevant newspapers in a very small set of newspaper articles, or you want to find some patents in a small set of, um, of, of registered patents. And, but nowadays the web is huge, right? And it's full of untrusted documents and a lot of random, random things and, and web spins. Therefore, if you directly use the traditional information retrieval method to try to retrieve some web page for you, you might end up with a lot of web spams or a lot of fake web pages, which is not what you want. So 
basically we have two challenges of web search here. Then the first one is that the web contains many sources of information and it's actually very difficult to decide who to trust, basically how to, how to avoid web spams and how to avoid fake pages or plagiarized pages. And one trick we can use is that trustworthy pages tend to point to each other. And this is something we will talk about later in our page rank method. And the second challenge is um, what's the best answer to the query, for example, to the query uh, newspaper. There's actually no single right answer, but one trick we can use is that pages that actually know about newspapers might all be pointing to many newspapers. So basically we can use the, the structure of the links to determine the importance of the web pages. This is also one of the idea behind the page rank algorithm. And so basically the idea, as you may have noticed, is to rank the nodes on the graph. And obviously, all the web pages are not equally important. And if you compare some unknown website with the Ruggers homepage, apparently the Ruggers homepage is, is much, much more important. And since there is a large diversity, in the web graph, no connectivity, let's just rank the pages by the link structure. For example, here we have this um, part of this web graph. And if you look at the blue node and the red node, you may notice that the blue node is actually connected to a lot of other web pages, but the red node is only connected to one web pages. Therefore, it's most probably that the blue node is much, much more important than the red node. So in this lecture, we will cover the following link analysis approaches for computing importance of nodes in a graph. And specifically, we'll cover the page rank algorithm, which is part of the algorithms that, that are used by Google. And we'll also cover the extension of the page rank algorithm, which is topic specific or personalized web of page rank. And this is a variant of page rank that take into account the topic information about the web pages and what topics the what topics are the web pages about they take into this um, information to to make the information retrieval more accurate and more personalized and the third theme we'll talk about is we will talk about some web spam detection algorithms <laughs>